One of the problems that we'll face when we think about the Old Testament canon is the fact that there are books mentioned in the Old Testament that do not show up anywhere within the Old Testament altogether. A great example of this would be the book of Joshua that is mentioned in the book of Joshua and the book of the War of the Lords that's mentioned in the book of Numbers. The canon of the Bible is the compilation of the different books that we see within the Bible. So Old Testament canon would be the 39 books that we see within the Old Testament and the New Testament canon is the 27 books that we see within the New Testament. And the question that we have to ask is why? Why is it that there are books mentioned in the Old Testament, books that do not show up within the Old Testament canon? And just to be clear, there actually is no answer to this question. But just because there is no answer to the question of what the process of the canonization was, does not mean that there was no process. We just do not have access to the information that explains that process. But how we know that we can trust the Old Testament canon is based off of the Jewish historian Flavius Josephus' words within his Antiquity Against Apian. Josephus says, We have but 22 books containing the history of all time, books that are justly believed in, and these five are the books of Moses which comprise the law and earliest traditions from the creation of mankind down to his death. From the death of Moses to the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, the successor of Xerxes, the prophets who succeeded Moses wrote the history of the events that occurred in their own time in 13 books. The remaining four documents comprise hymns to God and practical precepts to men. Now, there's a lot of details within the statement that Josephus makes that'll help us understand why the Old Testament canon is reliable and that it is okay for us to trust whatever process did exist back within Josephus' day. First off, Josephus was a first century Jewish historian. To be precise, he was born in AD 37. Now, King Artaxerxes began his reign in 465 BC and Josephus is saying by 465 BC the entire Old Testament was finished. We can trust that Josephus is accurate in regards to what he's saying and that the Old Testament was properly canonized by the time of King Artaxerxes because Josephus precisely lived 428 years away from the last part of the canonization process of the Old Testament. So we can believe rightfully that Josephus had access to some information that was easier for him to get to than it would be for us. We live over 2000 years removed from the reign of King Artaxerxes. However, Josephus only lived 400 years away. He was closer to the time period that it finished, which means that he would have more access to the information that explained why the canon included books like Joshua and left out books like Joshua. So the process should still be trusted even though we don't know what the process was. Also, the Jewish Bible is compiled the exact way that Josephus describes in his letter to Apian. The Jewish Bible, the Tanakh, has 22 books in it. That is our Old Testament. And what may confuse some people is that our Old Testament has 39 books. So why is it that Josephus is saying that the Jewish Bible, the Old Testament, the Tanakh, only has 22 books? The reason for that is that the way the Old Testament is broken up within the Jewish Bible is different than in our English Bibles. The first five books in the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, all count as five individual books. Then Joshua, Judges, and Ruth are also three individual books. Then we get to 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, and 1st and 2nd Chronicles. All of those books only count as one book within each compartment. So instead of saying 1st Samuel and 2nd Samuel, it would just be Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles. That also goes for the prophets. All the prophets are combined into one specific book. From Isaiah all the way down to Malachi, that would all be one book minus the book of lamentations that's considered a book of poetry and the book of daniel that's considered a book of writings that goes into a different compartment of the jewish bible this setup of the old testament which is similar to ours we have all the same books we just have it categorized differently is what the jewish community believed 
400 plus years before Jesus himself was born. And what we see is that Jesus himself recognized that that version of the Tanakh, the Old Testament, was authoritative. He adhered to the things that was written within those books, which should tell us that because Jesus saw those things as authoritative, we should also see those things as authoritative. This is all of the information that we have access to concerning the canonization of the Old Testament Bible. Now, if you guys have questions or maybe think that there was some things that were left out, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and God bless.